Hi everyone. So this recording is going to talk a little bit more about the different ways we look at fractions and the different meanings that we see in fractions. We're going to start with a little warm up here. I want you to look at this set of five students. Sorry, six students. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we need to find out from this set five true statements that we can make about this picture. And it's interesting how many ways we can look at fractions in our own lives, in our own world, in everyday things that we do. So let's start by looking at this group of students. And first let's look at how many students are wearing hats. I see one, two, three hats. So we can say there are three sixths of the students wearing hats. I don't want to take too much time, so I'm not going to write out each statement, but we understand that we need a complete sentence when we are answering questions about sets and fractions. So three sixths of the students are wearing hats. All right, look at the picture and see if you can think of other things. What else can we identify in fractions from this picture? That takes way too long for me to write. All right, how about how many students are standing? I see all of the students but one are standing. So if we have six on bottom, how many are standing? Five sixths of the students are standing. All right, what is another item? What else can we identify? How about um, students holding lunch boxes? I think this is a lunch box. This is a lunch box. Um, we'll call this one a lunch box and this one a lunch box. So one, two, three, four lunch boxes. So four out of six students. That's another way we can say fractions. Four out of six, or four sixth of the students have lunch boxes. All right, anything else? How about girls and boys? I think this is a girl. I think this is a boy. Another boy. Another boy. This is a girl, and this is a girl. So we have one, two, three girls out of six in the set. So three, six are girls. We can also do the other fraction. How many are boys? Well, the same. Three, six are boys. So we have equal parts, boys and girls. All right, great job, everyone. Maybe you found something different to do for fractions than I saw in this picture, and that's wonderful. Again, we want to write out our sentences, so I'm sorry Miss Porter didn't take the time to do that in this particular um, slide, but it would take too long the way I'm doing our lesson with a PowerPoint today. Our I can statement is to represent fractions in different ways. So we're going to look at parts of a whole like we did yesterday, and now we're going to look at two other ways parts of a whole. We also did the sets yesterday. And one more way we have not done, and that is fraction as a number line or a number on a number line. So here's our fractions as part of a whole because we have a shape and part of that shape is colored in and we are looking at that completion of the shape. Then we have 
a number line, 7 tenths. And so we have to look at the number line and we see that there are 10 equal parts in this spot, and we count up to seven to find seven tenths on the number line. And then fractions as part of a set, and we know that this set is money, and there are seven pennies out of the ten coins altogether, so seven tenths of this set are pennies. All right, so let's go on. We're going to look at another um, question and decide what type of group of fractions this is. Is this fractions as part of a whole? Is it fractions as a number line? Is it fractions as part of a set? What do you think? That's right. This one is part of a whole because we have a shape and we have the parts of that shape colored in. And this question says, which figure shows five, six shaded orange? Five, six shaded orange. So first let's look at how many shapes this is divided into. How many equal parts? One, two, three, four, five, six. So all of them are the same shape and they're all six equal parts. So we know that all of them have a denominator of six. Now we just need to find which ones have the numerator of five. And remember I told you when you're typing on a computer or typing in um, your answers on a keyboard, you end up having to use this diagonal line, but it means the same thing as my straight fraction bar. All right, so they're both the fraction bar. It's just um, shown differently. All right, so this one has one, two, three, four shaded. This one only has one shaded. This one has one, two, three, four, five shaded in. That gives me the fraction of five, six. So I think that's our answer. This one is one, two, three, six. This one is two, six. And this one is six, six. Or as we learned yesterday, one whole. All right, how about this one? Well, yes, that's very easy. It is a number line. So fractions is the number on a number line. This says put a point on the number line to represent 5, 6. So first we need to make sure we have 6 equal parts. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 equal parts. And my fifth part, this is number 1 part, 2 part, 3 part, 4 part, Five part. So my five six is right here. All right. How about representing the fraction as part of a set? This set are is a set of automobiles. There are six automobiles. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six. How many of these automobiles are red cars? That would be our five, six. How many of them are yellow buses? One, six are yellow buses. All right, let's move on. Here is a story problem. Sam had 12 apples. He ate three of them. What fraction of apples does Sam have now? So let's decide if we are working with part of a whole, fraction as a number line, or fraction as part of a set. If we have a group of apples, think about apples. Are they all the same shape? The same size? Nope. So probably not part of a whole. Are they on a number line? Well, we could place them on a number line, but they're not quite a number line. So this is a part of a set. Now let's solve this. So we can sketch a picture using our table, our, our journals, right? and make 12 apples, and then we can cross out the three apples that Sam ate, and then we can look at the fraction 
of the apples that Sam has left, we'd have to count how many, and then we would write our answer using a complete sentence. So I want you to pause this video and do that. All right, I hope that you paused and you took the time to work in your journal to illustrate this problem and to write out a complete sentence. Let's go and check your answers. All right, so here's our thinking. This is a set. I'm going to draw the 12 apples, and remember they're not all the same size, and then we're going to cross out the three that Sam ate. How many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we had 12 twelfths, or 12 over 12, that was all of the apples, minus the three apples, the three over 12 that Sam ate, equals nine left over, and we still have 12 total apples, so nine twelfths. Sam has nine twelfths of the apples left. That is our complete sentence and how you should respond to all of your answers when they are asking a question. You give a final answer with a complete sentence. Now try story problem two. A canvas is divided into 12 equal sections. Three of the sections are painted blue. What fraction of the canvas is painted blue? A canvas is like a piece of paper, but it's uh, something you paint on. So. You can use your journal page or paper to make your 12 equal sections, um, probably like I did the cake in our problem yesterday where I drew a rectangle and divided it into equal pieces as best I could. Remember, our drawings are not going to be exact unless we got out a ruler and measured everything, but just for our picture, it's okay to be um, not exact. So pause the video, work on your 12 equal sections, Three of them are painted blue and answer this question. What fraction of the canvas is painted blue? All right, I'm very glad. I hope you got time to work on that because you paused the video and now we're going to show that answer. All right, so is this part of a whole, part of a number line, or part of a of set? Well, if we made equal parts and we're shading some of those in, it's a part of a whole. And here we go, part of a whole. Here is our illustration of this fraction. And it shows one, two, three shaded in. So three twelfths of the canvas is painted blue, is your answer to this problem in a complete sentence. Here's the next one. Hannah is walking 12 blocks to the park. On her way to the park, she stops at Amy's house, which is three blocks from Hannah's house. What fraction of the distance to the park has Hannah walked? So if Hannah starts at her house and she walks three blocks to Amy's house, and there are 12 total blocks. So we have three blocks, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And here's the park. We'll put a slide on the park. That's a pitiful slide. Huh. I don't even know how to make that better. <laughs> we'll turn it into a swing. There we go. Miss Porter's drawing skills are not very good. All right, so we've got someone on a swing at the park, 12 blocks away, right? So if Hannah started at her home, goodness, this sure does look like a number line to me with 12 equal blocks going to the park. How many blocks or how much of the fraction, what fraction of the distance did Hannah walk already to Amy's house? 
pause the video and answer in a complete sentence what fraction of this walk Hannah has already done. All right, let's see. It is a number line and 12 equal parts and she walked one, two, three of those. So Hannah has walked three twelfths of the way to the park. Yay! All right, guys, here is a very good illustration that I would snip. Use that snipping tool. You go to your start menu and the accessories and find the little scissors, and then you click on it, and then it lets you drag it open and take a snip or a picture of this slide because this will help show you a model for the number line, the set, and the part of a whole. I hope that you guys found this very helpful, and we will learn more about fractions next week. Have a great day.